I'm in Hoboken today. Where? Across from the Clam Broth House on uh, Newark Street, just off of River Street. You'll find the lingering remains of an old um, TCC Teleplex payphone of the future. I'll dig up my pictures I got of this phone when it was still here a few years ago. But it had a, a keyboard and a touch screen and maybe one of the only payphones in modern times that accepted 50 cent pieces and dollar coins. This thing was out here for 15 years at least. Did not work when I was last here. But it was, it was a little different. It was like one of the, the payphone industry's last gasps for, for relevance. It had a webcam, you could browse the internet, you could, you know, do all kinds of stuff. But these were owned by TCC Teleplex, which was owned by Dennis Novick, the late Dennis Novick. And I don't remember what the connection is between Metrotel and TCC, but um, I think maybe he just, Dennis just, uh, commandeered use of this, this enclosure. So let's move on. This is on uh, River Street, just off of 2nd Street. An actual intact payphone. Again with the Metrotel header, but don't think this is a, I mean this is actually a Metrotel phone. Wow, it has dial tone. That's incredible. A working payphone in Hoboken. Of course, dial tone doesn't doesn't always mean you can make a call. structure is pretty very similar to the enclosures you see in New York but the header is a little different what is this anyway kind of bag with a lock side but I bet you they're still selling ads on that, that previous one that we looked at. Catch you before someone else told you. Yeah, out front media, their name is up here. That's that's an active display advertising company. So I'll bet you they're still selling these ads. I'm going to try something. It says local calls 25 cents, but I didn't think I knew a local number to call. But then, what do you know, a moving company truck pulls up with a phone number on it. So maybe I'll give that a try. She wants 50 cents. It's supposed to be 25. Oops. She said thank you. 
so I'm trying to connect to this number. Busy signal. At least I got my money back and an extra quarter to boot. Look at that. I hit the jackpot. Okay, so I don't think the, this phone actually works. I tried calling 311, 411, and 0 for operator. 311 went to the, the busy signal. 411 asked for 75 cents. And the operator went to a busy signal, so I don't think this thing is capable of making calls. Looks good, though. And I'm going to try one last thing. I always forget to do this. A and I check. Busy signal. Yeah, that pumped up. That phone's fucked. Wonder how much money is in it. I'm surprised how clearly I remember all these locations because it's it's probably been four or five years since I was out here. Um, this is Frank Sinatra Drive by uh, Stevens Park. And with the the PTS signage, which I can see from here, this this sucker might actually work. It does not. No dial tone. No number shown either. Yeah, PTS. If you're wondering why I th this is, I think this is PTS. Well, it has a Metrotel plaque on top. It's because I don't think Metrotel exists anymore. And you can barely see it, but in tiny print it says Pacific Telemanagement Services. Which is PTS. Careful here. No cars coming. in Hoboken is Washington Street, which is the main, I guess this is still the main thoroughfare, the main drag. And sure enough, my memory is correct. There's, there's another phone booth across the street. I'm surprised they remain because now, now that I jog my memory, um, there had been discussions at the community board level or the city council or whatever about getting rid of these things and replacing them with something like Link NYC or a, you know, a smart city kiosk or something. And the discussion came years ago when the 15-year long-term contracts with the, um, between these payphone owners in the city, those contracts expired. So that's been a while. And I guess they just never got around to replacing them with smart city machines.
I'm still on Washington Street. And this looks like it was another payphone of the future. Where you could get four minutes of internet access for a buck. Save the Palisades? Oh, deep WBAI. Radio station that ignored my requests for me to do a show for him. This would be a pretty good spot to stick your payphone if you had a if you have a wirelessly connected one sitting around. But you'd need some kind of power. And it does look like there are power cables down there, but they probably don't work. Hudson and 12th and between the last little video clip and this one I had a Eureka moment and remembered that not only did I write an article about Hoboken payphones on my website but that article included a map which I got from the Hoboken city website so even though I, I was on my way to remembering almost all of these locations, uh, I don't have to do that anymore. So this one had the, the payphone of the future, but they replaced it with a regular phone, which has dial tone. It might even work, I don't know. Let's repeat it back. It is, wow. Yep, no. Wow, this phone appears to work. We'll do that again so you can maybe hear it. in from New York because the signage is all uh, check events for free at nycvisit.com um, I forget how many of these teleplex put out but um, but again this is not the payphone of the future this is um, hey maybe Metro, Metro Tel still does exist I'm happy to be wrong But their contract with the city definitely ran out um, back in 2017. It's been like three and a half years. Three, three and a half years, I think. Up on Hudson and 14th Street. Having a map makes this this hunt seem a little less like an adventure, but I guess it's going to save me time. This looks like a PTS, even though it has no... This is the signal that it's probably PTS. I don't think I see that four minutes for one dollar placard on any other. And this phone number shown is obviously wrong because it's a 718 area code and that's, that's an old New York City area code. No dial tone either. And the fact that I haven't seen any identifying information for Metrotel 
except for one, one of the first ones I saw, but that placard was covered up by some other sticker. But if Metrotel is not identifying itself or giving contact information, then they're probably not in business anymore. Interestingly, the light is still on for this one. But the phone doesn't work. The lights are on, but no dial tone. So I guess this is an electrical enclosure. And by the way, something I've noticed about the street addresses here, the, the building numbers, is that they seem to be, they seem to use the same formula as, as the Queens street grid, which is itself modeled after Philadelphia. But the uh, first two numbers are the cross street and the second two numbers are the building number. So this sign is pointing you to 1333 Hudson, which is between 13th and 14th. And if we cross over 14th street, all the addresses are gonna start with 14. They don't seem to hyphenate. They don't seem to hyphenate the way they commonly do in Queens, but commonly, but not always. Let's go back over to Washington. This is 14th Street, just off of Washington. I guess this phone isn't going to work. Actually, maybe it will if the wire is still connected. No, no doubt, Tom. Huh? Oh, here we go. Here's some contact info for Metrotel. I'll look for this when I get home. Oh, okay. It says it's operated by the city of Hoboken. That's interesting. A lot of people in New York think the phones are all operated by the city or Verizon or some abstract municipal entity, but the remaining phones are all privately owned and have been for a long time. According to the map, there were supposed to be three others in this in this vicinity. Although one one phone on the map is already not present, so I could probably assume others will be missing as well. Ah, well, this was not expected. This is not on the map. The phone is gone, obviously, but this is an old TCC Teleplex location at the gas station on Willow and 14th. And this is obviously history. I always see the the top two holes in the in the round one. Always looks like a facial expression to me. Oh my god, somebody took the payphone away. But this is this is one of those things my instincts have, have not changed in a long time. Whenever I see a gas station, I always think there had to have been a payphone there. <laughs> and there may still be remnants of it, as is the case here. It's actually a pretty cool view of those buildings up, up yonder. So when I'd said earlier that some of the locations on that map 
were no longer present or had been removed. Uh, that's not exactly true. I took a little closer look and found that the map represents phones that were actually installed and those that were uh, approved by the city. But I'm going to assume that those ones that were approved were never actually activated or never actually installed. So I don't have to bother looking for those. dangling handset. <clears throat> and just as an aside, this little bit of <clears throat> this kind of a cool little street furniture flourish. The full-size keyboard. I mean full size, uh, the QWERTY keyboard on, the, on these parking meters, it's kind of a cool thing to look at. There was supposed to be one at Willow and 11th, but there, there is none there. But this is 11th and Clinton, where we do find one present. Dial tone. I'll do A and I check. checks out. But conspicuously there's no contact information for whoever owns this thing. I also haven't been looking for prey. I did spot her once in Newark. But uh, I think these phones are probably too new for her, for her vintage. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try a couple of things. Let's see what happens if I try to call this phone at its own number. Want 75 cents for a local call. It's highway robbery. Let me try um, try 311. I'm gonna guess this phone works. I don't feel like taking the 75 cent chance. that number up when I get home. Oh, there's another thing I wanted to try. What happens if I call that number from my cell?
nothing. Well, I'm not sure what that means. Okay, you know what? I'll give it a try. Risk the 75 cents. Start a GoFundMe someday to get back all these coins I've wasted on this project. 75 cents for three minutes, she says. And I'm obviously not expecting this call to go through. I just this will give me some sense if the phone actually works. Busy signal. How much does it want to call my own phone? Uh, whoops. Okay. It wants 75 cents for long distance calls, too. That's it. Jarroth Inc. is the official business name of PTS. So that full record would say Jarroth Inc. doing business as PTS. So this phone works. And I even got my money back. Joy. So just a few more, I think. What I was hoping to find today was a surviving internet phone. The, the TCC Teleplex device that had the QWERTY keyboard and the, the internet access and the screen and all that stuff. But I was hoping there'd still be one of those moldering away out here. But I'll bet you the owner of those phones, Dennis Novick, I bet you he came out here and, and took him away himself or got somebody to do it for him. Because uh, I corresponded with him about, about these phones um, back when, I guess it was around when I posted that article about the Hoboken pay funds. And he saw it and that's one of the ways we connected because he wanted, he was asking me how, how they looked and did they work and yada yada. And I was like, sorry dude, they look like shit and they don't work. I didn't know how else to put it to him. Sorry to say Dennis died. I think it was about a year ago now. But if he did come along and take them out or get somebody to return them to him, I guess that would have been pretty smart. But Because he still seemed to have notions of deploying them somewhere else. So like I said, I'm doesn't look like I'm going to find find any. They, they were still out here last time I was here, three and a half years ago. But it's looking like they're gone now. This one's over on Willow and Fifth. And clearly there ain't no dial tone here. And it's another transplant from New York. As indicated by the 718 area code. I'll see if I can look that up and figure out where this phone came from. I think there's only one other phone left over by uh, by the waterfront. 
And even if there are others, I think I'm probably done for the day. I'm not going to find the internet phone out here. This is pretty cool. I just happened to, to spot this, not based on this plaque, but um, I guess you'd call this a gazebo, maybe. But it has names of classical composers all across the top. And you got your Bach, you got your Mozart. And I was just thinking to myself, they're not going to give Liszt any respect, are they? But, <laughs> but there he is. Ranked where he should be with the greats. The greatest of the greats. This one's on Washington and 3rd. Sort of making my way back to the, the PATH train station. chance for dial tone. Oh, but I'll get the number. There's another one on Washington between 2nd and 1st. They all look the same, don't they? at Washington and first. No dial tone. Back here, it looks like this dude is actually using the payphone, but I suspect he's just using it for cover so he can send a text message in the shade. Although there's plenty of shade around here. This is Washington at Newark Street. Yep. Yep, I called it. He was just ducking in to send a text. This one has the remains of international calling codes, country codes. No dial tone. stops here, bus stop shelters. This 
one's on Observer Highway, just off of Washington. No dial tone. Can't quite read that number, but maybe I'll get it when I watch this video later. So there are, this is definitely going to be the last one for today. There are a few more up ahead, further on along Observer Highway and then on Newark Street and um, I think it was also Patterson Street or Patterson Avenue, whichever had a few, but that's it's getting a little late and I think I made my point today. had a dial tone and made a beeping noise. I wonder who that is. I grew up in Tampa. I've never heard of Tampa tone, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, me not hearing, but it doesn't mean anything. We're getting into what looks like this might be an old warehouse building. This type of more open area. Actually, let's end up. Um, Say goodbye to Hoboken with a look at whatever the hell this is on this wall. It's on Willow Avenue just off of Observer Highway. Oh, I see. A little close, I couldn't tell what all, I mean, from a distance, I couldn't tell where all this was. Looks like all birds. Looks like it's been lynched. I don't see any uh, plaque or anything indicating what this is. Is this anything? Alrighty. Back to the pass station. Well, I'm back in New York, back from Hoboken. This is probably an old abandoned Verizon setup. Speaking of um, speaking of payphones in New York, sometime in the last five or six months, PTS became the the leading payphone service provider in the five boroughs. They have hundreds of phones, but most people would have a hard time getting at them. They're located in abuse shelters, rehab centers, hospitals, jails, that kind of thing. The likeliest place you'll find them is in a subway station. And even those are going go, going fast. But the reason they, they overtook City Bridge in number of, of payphones, because City Bridge has been slaughtering their payphones at a rapid pace. And word is they're down to like less than 200 in all five boroughs. There used to be thousands and thousands of them. And this phone has the mysterious 138740 live. The, the six digit number would have been the unique PPT ID, public pay telephone identifier, that is used just to catalog and 
and document where all the payphones are located. And then it has the word live, but that can't possibly be, be an indicator that the phone works. But it's a beauty, isn't it? This one's on 40th Street, between 5th and 6th. This one, I have a photo somewhere where the phone was gone, and there was a sticker behind it that said something about coastal communications, which would have at one time owned this phone. Graffiti in Hoboken was pretty tame compared to what you see here, with a couple of exceptions. phone should be gone within a month. That previous one, the, the mangled pedestal, that's probably going to be around a while. That's the Bryant Park across the street. Beep, 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 beep. It smells like piss in here. Not even when I step back a few steps. Even with the wind blowing like away. see this I think it's a phone booth but obviously it's not it's just a taxi dispatch booth outside of Grand Central but it's always fun to see something like this and think that wow there must be a payphone in there but nothing doing this is Lexington and 40th So with all these payphones finally disappearing once and for all, no doubt, huh? I'm also finally seeing some signs of life in the Link NYC program, which has basically stagnated for the last three years. There we go, that mysterious live 136380, with that six digit number being the unique identifying number for the phone. What does it mean? Maybe it means this is a live spot where they can actually put a link kiosk. I don't know. 
We'll find out. I'm sure there's a perfectly boring explanation. But uh, yeah, I'm seeing some signs of life in the Link NYC rollout. They're going to have a, um, a hearing in front of the, I think it's the technology department, or Department of Technology, where they're going to once again renegotiate their contract so that the city gets even less money than it already has gotten. Actually, I don't think it's gotten anything so far. And then they're going to... They say they're going to use the money that they save and not... Uh, not by not paying the city this, this amount of money that they agreed to, they'll be able to manufacture and install and activate a bunch more kiosks in low-income neighborhoods. That's been a, a leading complaint about these things is that they found mostly in affluent areas where nobody really needs free Wi-Fi. And they tend to... Depends how you interpret it and how unkind you want to sound, but it it does tend to degrade quality of life in some areas by attracting uh, homeless and vagrants who are the ones who actually have the most use for these things. It really turned 3rd Avenue from I think about 14th Street on up. It really turned that into a shithole for a while. Maybe it still is. the claim that there are only 200 uh, sidewalk phones remaining in all five boroughs has actually been met with some disbelief <laughs> in certain circles, but I totally believe it. I'm down from thousands upon thousands, but I covered about 18 miles yesterday through Brooklyn and Queens, and I wasn't solely keeping an eye out for that thing. I was kind of having a an anxiety attack, but I would have noticed them if I if I crossed cross paths with any of them, and I didn't see a single one. And that's a lot of a lot of ground, about 18 miles, I think, from uh, walking, and then also by bus. I think the remaining ones are probably all in Manhattan. A friend and I might do a driving tour of Staten Island this weekend, or maybe next week. I don't think there's going to be a single one out there. I know for I know for a fact there are none in all of Western Queens, and that's a big area. I don't think there's a single one left in Corona or Jackson Heights or Woodside. And those are all areas that used to be pretty densely populated with with those things. Here's a couple on 31st Street. Uh, this is off of Lexington. NDT, no dial tone. That uh, three-letter abbreviation for no dial tone was one of the early weirdnesses about my payphone website when I would list the phone that, that had no dial tone. I'd say NDT, and NDT were my, my father's initials, Norman Day Thomas, and he often referred to himself as NDT in, uh, in letters or paperwork or whatever. Or rather, that was how he signed his name a lot. And my father was a fan of my websites. He had he had a bit of a thing for payphones himself. He was early in the mid '80s. He was looking at buying one or leasing one. In the, that's the, in the mid '80s. That's when the Joe Q public was allowed to get in on the payphone business. But he never did. Somebody left a 
syringe here. These are at 23rd and 3rd. And there, the scaffolding makes it impossible to get a wider angle view of these, but you should know what these things look like by now, right? <laughs> was in payphones until they got kicked out. The City Bridge Monopoly came along and acquired all their all their assets, but every once in a while the the newer placards that City Bridge put in come come off and you can see that the phone was formerly owned by Telebeam. They're based in the uh, their, their headquarters is like half a mile from where I live. I've never had any interaction with them though. I've only made a few real friends in the payphone business. And it's probably best I keep it that way because if I got too involved in the, the real world of it, I'd learn to hate it. <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. This one's on 31st and 3rd. I skipped a couple of locations because there were a bunch of people gathered around the homeless people. I don't like to mess with them or provoke them or point cameras at them. I don't like pointing cameras at anybody. I end up doing it a lot anyway. I like this red. Most of these ones up 3rd Avenue have the, the old Telebeam info showing on top, not on bottom. Which you can't really tell, but that's a city bridge placard. Mysterious, but probably not so mysterious. Spray paint scrawl. 135867. Oh, that's just the old Telebeam serial number. The PPT would have changed when it transferred over to City Bridge. Or, uh, yeah, City Bridge. You know, I would have bet cash money that these were gone. I thought I, I thought I had checked in on this location and found these, these gone. Well, they're not gone. These are, um, these are genuine prey phones. Although, looks like I won't be able to get close enough to 
show you what I'm talking about. So they're tearing up the sidewalk here. And who's to say if they're going to get rid of the payphones sooner rather than later. But Prey is on this surface, the left side. And I'm squinting my eyes trying to... Oh, there it is. I don't know if this zoom is going to work. It might get too shaky for this to be useful, but... direct sun but I think I got it. It's thirty third and third by the way. Crush from stickies. Third Avenue is is, a, is an interesting uh, venue for for there still to be surviving payphones because this is the stretch of road where Link NYC got its start. First one I think was on fifteenth and third outside of Starbucks. So you'd think this would be the first piece of road where they got rid of all the payphones, but this one is still here. These two. And a number of others. Whoa. 